If I consider the pace of development, we're certainly going to get to a point where there is an established practice of the use of independent talent. But that is actually a, a strategic choice to say that I can bring somebody in on a contract basis because it's the right choice to make. There's far more control being taken by independence and people wanting to be independent. Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Outsized Advantage, a podcast about flexible workforce models and uh, agile talent. I'm Niklas Tillander, founder of Outsized. I've got with me uh, our CEO and head of Africa, Johan van Niekerk. Good to have you here. Always good to be with you. Great. Um, today, I thought we were going to talk about the the development of the freelancing market uh, globally, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe in particular in, in, in our geography, so where we are the most active, um, such as Southeast Asia, Middle East, India, and, and of course, South Africa, where, where we are today. Um, maybe, um, maybe we start off by kind of contrasting historically what, you know, what the differences have been mm -hmm. between let's say, um, the more mature freelancing markets like in the US or, or Europe compared to some of, some of our markets? We certainly lag behind those mature markets in terms of the development. So not that long ago in our markets, independent work would have been seen as relatively low value, transactional, uh, gig type work short contract durations, lower, lower value. What we have seen in the mature markets is that this has developed up into the professional segment. And that's where we are now. So it's definitely moved into that space and continues to do so. But I think it's fair to say that we're now fairly entrenched that independent talent and professional independent talent is here to stay and only growing. Cool. So I mean, I'm, I live in, in a kind of more mature market. Mm. My, my, I live in, in Sweden, which is you know, obviously a market where we don't, don't have any activities at outsize. But, but there I would say for, and, and previously lived in the UK, and, and for sure freelancing has for long been across all you know, levels or, or, or sectors, right? So you've had what you, you know, the, the kind of more lower paid gig type um, uh, positions all the way up to, you know, some of the most strategic functions, right? Mm. Um, and you're saying that's now changing also in our markets, right? But so why, why is it, why has it changed? Why is it changing in, in our markets as well? Yeah, I think we are seeing far more balance in the power dynamic between employers and employees, and I, and I use that term very broadly to include both permanent and independence, and a number of myths that have been bust in the last number of years, which was very much on the go, but expedited by COVID. So one myth is that employers really control career growth. So there's a corporate ladder to be climbed. There is the importance of titles, that you're defined by your title. And what we've seen is workers, employees, taking control and saying, no, no, I, I will define my career path, number one, and how I am defined in terms of that. So we see many individuals who want to build a portfolio career of projects, of experiences with a number of brands and, and employers, and who want to be able to talk about not the titles that they had, they want to say, well, what did I deliver? What projects did I actually uh, work on? What was it that I learned? And, and how can I take that and then use it in another context? So there's, there's this balance, and we're seeing it from both sides as well. We also then have the realization that has come in that talent doesn't have to be defined by a particular radius around an employer's head office. Talent is global and you can access it remotely or on a hybrid basis from further away. Uh, and there's all sorts of new models that are coming in, people working in different cities, but they can fly down once a month. So talent is everywhere. 
And if you want to access that talent, you need to be prepared to do so, to go and look for it and access it in the way that it wants to be accessed. And <clears throat> we've then also seen that there's far more control being taken by independence and people wanting to be independents in terms of where they want to be. They're very clear on this is where I live, this is how I work, this is how, how I choose to interact with employers, and this is how you can take it or leave it. And if you want that, that's what you have to work with. Okay. And is this a generational thing, do you think? Or is it, it's, did COVID kind of trigger those, those developments or those thoughts across, kind of across the board? I think it's certainly opened the eyes of both employers and employees uh, to the possibilities. There is a generational thing that we see, certainly to the younger generation, they are very comfortable working remotely or through technology. And so we see technology playing a far greater role, not only in terms of how they uh, work with employers and the tools that they use, but in fact, how they find these opportunities, how they find these projects. That's why there's a business like Outsize, where we're using technology to match the independence on one side with the, the employers on the other side. So technology playing a far bigger role and those that are familiar with technology and comfortable with technology. So I think the portfolio type career, the use of technology, the shorter duration work, that's perhaps more familiar to the, the, the newer generation coming through, but certainly it's, it's not that we're only working in one generation, the eyes have been opened to all. I was, when you talked about the technology, one thought that struck me is also in terms of um, how the market is working. You have, I mean, you have players like ourselves and you have obviously a lot of other kind of platforms mm. and, and, and aggregators of, of supply and demand. Mm. Is that something you think has contributed a lot to, to this development or is it or is it the other way around kind of that you had the you know the shifts in 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 preferences and, and companies looking for more agile um, workforce models and, and and then platforms kind of popped up to 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 benefit from that or, or how do you see that I think platforms have played a big role in in, in, in bringing structure and, 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 and formalizing what is possible. The demand for this, both from employers and from, from independents or people wanting to be independent, has probably always been there. It was just a, a much higher hurdle to have to jump over to actually realize it. It was tough to find work if you were an independent. You had to build a large network. You had to spend a significant amount of your time out there looking for work, finding brands that you would like to work with. Whereas now that's been radically improved and enhanced through the use of technology and platforms, whereby the opportunities are brought to you, you can spend a lot more of your time working on projects that you love and that you're good at. And that efficiency gain is to everybody's advantage. So employers have far better access to talent, a far broader array of talent that is available to them, uh, better processes in terms of curation and, and, and the speed at which they can find them. So it really addresses matters like governance and uh, again, just access. And from, from the independence side, they are able to spend more time on billable hours, which means they can put forward better rates because they're not having to spend all this time looking for work. And, and you know, you, you're, you're based in South Africa and you kind of work mainly here, but also mm. some, you know, Covers other parts of, of Africa as well, but uh, how, how mature or immature would you say that the market is in terms? Of, if you, if you go to, you know, your 10, 10 companies, like ten enterprise clients of of a certain size, how many of them are already using freelancers in in kind of this more skilled areas? Yeah, I think all of them are. But I wouldn't say that all of them have a company-wide understanding that they should be. So there are hiring managers within those organizations who have come to a point where they realize they're not finding what they're needing and then find what they need from an independent and therefore make use and they become 
great proponents for this, this, this method of contracting and for the, the use of independence. But it's still growing in terms of a clear decision by top management to say, we see the value in the use of flexible talent for the entire group. And these are the ways in which we want to engage. These are our partners in, in the ecosystem to find talent, to vet talent, to manage our talent, to help us work with them. So that's definitely a, a maturing area. Uh, so yeah, still, still, still the early days. Yeah, and, and are there certain pockets where, where the usage of independence is, is bigger than, than mm. others? I mean, I know from some other markets, it you know, might have started in, I don't know, tech, for example, right? Is that the same in, in, in our markets, would you say? Or? Broadly speaking, I would say so. Technology, a lot of use, data, a lot of use. Where we're now starting to see a, a, a lot of growth is as employers move to outcomes-based or project-based methods of, of delivery within their organizations, there's a lot of skills needed around that. Project managers and business analysts and agile specialists and such like that are helping to facilitate those projects. And those are really often best accessed on a, on a contract basis because it's for a project for a certain term. So we're seeing there a lot growing. And then there's, there's I think, a realization that many skills which many organizations would have said, no, no, we only, we only access these on a permanent basis. That in truth, many of those skills are available uh, on a contract basis at times when it makes sense. So especially into roles where hiring cycles are long, there's a lot of pressure on teams for certain projects that those that you would have said you need on a permanent basis are really not needed on a permanent basis. And that that's to your advantage as an, as, as an employer because it, you don't have to increase your headcount, you have that protection, you're able to flex up and flex, up, flex down. And in these I think we can say uncertain times, there's a lot of value in that. I know we, we talked about it in, 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 in great depth, uh, another kind of use case, uh, but maybe we can you know, go through it here as well um, more quickly. And, and that's how you can actually use independent talent where in, in areas where you struggle to attract permanent employees. I think we're getting, what we have seen is that Often hiring managers are turning to independent talent as a last resort. But once they've seen the success that they can have on that side, it becomes part of their, their strategy to find, find, find talent. So we, we know that hiring cycles can be long. We know that that means you're often sitting without the talent, so the work is not getting done. And, and, and that we know that your deliverables as a department or as a manager are not going to go away. So your ability to deliver is a problem if you don't fill that. So bringing in a contract in that case makes a lot of sense. It also relieves the team who can then focus on, on other aspects of work, be they higher value or just their actual jobs, and they're not getting spread too thin. Also, we just know that in certain areas, the best talent is what you're after and the best talent may be available on an independent basis and so it should be part of what you consider it's 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 there it's a it's it's open to everybody to make use of and think about it earlier on rather than later on uh, so that it's not a, a, a choice that comes down the line where you're getting desperate but that it's actually a, a strategic choice to say that i can bring somebody in on a contract basis because it's the right choice to make. You you mentioned um, uncertain times, which you know we, we when we're recording this in May 2024, and, mm -hmm. and in a lot of the markets there's been economic uncertainties, right? Um, um, and and some companies may you know they may have gone through redundancies or they may have hiring freezes, for example. Mm. Um, is is that has that been? Kind of a driver for the increased usage of independent talent as well or the like the hiring freezes in particular maybe or is that kind I, of I, ad, an ad hoc thing that kind yes of... i i wouldn't say it's a driver so it's, it's certainly not pushing the, the the use to new levels what it does do is highlight 
a particular area of value of independent consulting. So in uncertain times where you don't want to be adding headcount or cannot add headcount, you can bring somebody in for a few months. When you're not able to fill a gap that somebody has left because they've resigned, you can bring somebody in who understands all of that and can deliver to the same extent. And it just buys you time in terms of what the markets will do. So overall, I would say when the economic situation is good and everybody's working and, and, and there's, there's, there's greater output possible and more projects on the go, that we see greater use of independence across the markets. But in these uncertain times, we certainly see the value of the flexibility being raised and coming to the fore and the value of finding independence who can fill in those roles that were previously filled by permanent employees that you now cannot. And that again speaks to the talent that is moving into independent work that wasn't previously there. Mm. What we see is that it, it opens the eyes of, of managers to the fact that this is now possible, which they may not have thought was the case, but now truly it is. In, in South Africa in particular, what, what is, you know, if, if a, you know, if, if you came, let's imagine Johan, 35 years old, mm. that's roughly your age, <laughs> right? Uh, coming home to your parents saying, oh, hey, I've, 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 mm. I've just left my, my job at, you know, company X mm. and become an independent consultant. You know, what, what is, what's the acceptance these days? In, for that in, in, in South Africa? Is that something that is, hey, yeah, great for you, blah, blah, blah? Or is it still a little bit, oh, you had a permanent job, why, why, do, you, you know, why do you want to go independent? It's still the exception rather than the rule. So it's probably quite unusual. It might, you, know, you might raise some eyebrows. But then again, when most of the talent that I speak to on a regular basis, they're very clear on why they're making that choice. It's around work-life balance. It's around flexibility. It's around wanting to be an entrepreneur. South Africa is full of entrepreneurs. As soon as you say that, then that, that, that changes it. Uh, it's because they want to work for different companies and they realize they have value to bring not just to one organization, but to multiple organizations potentially. And they see this as actually a, a way to expedite the building of their own skills. So when, you, when, you, when you've rationalized it like that and you've thought about it and explained it like that, then it makes a lot of sense and then people really get it. It's also no longer a tiny community. We have a pretty established community here in South Africa and so it's very easy to find other independents that you can talk to. There are a lot of lessons that can be learned. There's, there are established practices uh, and, and there's organizations like an outsize that can help you. And so it's definitely not something completely unusual, but it's still growing. What about cross-border work? Is that something you've seen grow? There has definitely been an increased interest in this over the last, let me say, two, three years. Certainly when we started Outsized in South Africa specifically, it was really local for local. And while that's still the majority of what we're doing, we are seeing that many of our international clients who have now gotten to know us and work with us across multiple markets are seeing that there is incredible value to be had in the talent based in our markets. Remember, Outsized is based in growth markets and those are the markets that we focused in across Africa, Middle East and Asia Pacific. And on a global basis, the skills are on par. Let's, let's face the facts. They are in demand, have always been in, in, in demand. We've seen the term brain drain use and, and, and people leaving, but it was always a big decision. Now, as an independent, you have the ability to stay in your home country, stay near your family, not uproot yourself, but work internationally. And so, yes, we have been doing global work, uh, various skills that are in demand. Uh, it, obviously, that's now on a remote basis, so it needs to be from employers who are happy to work remotely. Uh, it's, it's very defined work that you can work on independently and come back and deliver it. Uh, but it has massive advantages 
in established markets, both in terms of price and quality. And sometimes, interestingly enough, things like time zones, the ability to work at a time when, when they are not, which just speeds up the delivery of projects. What, what are some areas that you've seen uh, in terms of skills areas where you've kind of placed uh, or matched South African talent to international clients? Yeah, we've had various actuarial technical skills, things like profit development and model building that we've done cross-border. When it comes to certain platforms, things like SAP and Workday, we've had demand for skills in, in both directions uh, in South Africa. I mean, globally, we, we know that, for instance, the work that we do in the Middle East, there's, there's a paucity of skills based in the Middle East, and so even in areas around uh, regulation, accounting, uh, and other technical skills that are in demand there, we've been able to facilitate that between here and those countries. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's still small, I would say, but there's interest. We've also seen in areas like data, um, okay. in, in particular areas, health, health data, uh, for instance, was a recent example that we had where, where there was interest from the US. So US, Europe, Middle East, these all areas that are taking interest in the skills from South Africa. And so I'm just speaking from that yeah, perspective. No. Yeah. I mean, I know in, in Southeast Asia, for example, we're, I mean, we have our own team mm. based in, in Singapore, Malaysia, right? mm. and, and Hong Kong and uh, Australia as well now, actually. But looking at kind of Southeast Asia, we've, you know, you have, have the, you know, Singapore, which is a very high cost kind mm. of location. Uh, and then you have, you know, surrounding geographies where, where it's different. Uh, South Africa, I imagine, is interesting because it's you have it, it's a little bit of both, right? You have a very you know high a talent pool with very mm. high skilled mm. at a, at an affordable rate for clients in in the US and and, and Europe, mm -hmm. um, but it's also an opportunity for talent in the rest of Africa to do work for South African companies potentially. Oh yes, oh yes. So I don't know how much you have we done much of that. Okay. Not, not that much, but there's certainly been interest and we continue to explore these things. Um, it's been more a case of South African talent elsewhere. We have done talent from elsewhere in Africa into, for instance, the Middle East. Okay. So yeah. these opportunities are growing and as outsides grow, so do these, so do these opportunities. Okay. And, and if, you look, if you look ahead the next kind of, I don't know, three years, what, mm. what, what do you think will be some of the big, big things that we can expect to see in, in, in our markets? If I consider the pace of development, we're certainly going to get to a point where there is an established practice of the use of independent talent, more so than we are now. So that becomes standard. We are going to see, I think we're going to be surprised by some of the employers who adopt this and radically move to a freelancer first proposition and therefore beat others and are, on a, and are accessing the best talent. I do think we've the pendulum has swung from remote post COVID to hybrid and a lot more demand for on, 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 on premise independent consultants. And we may see that swing back to saying, well, now if we want to access that, that broader talent pool, you know, even regionally or globally, we need to be more prepared in certain instances to consider remote again. So I think we're going to see that swing as well back to that. So a hybrid workforce is really going to move to both on-premise, remote, hybrid, and then flexible and permanent, mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a combination of those. So smart employers are going to say, what is the right outcome for this particular project, for this particular role, in this particular circumstance? and have the processes and procedures in place to facilitate that. Fantastic. I think that's a great wrap. Um, thank you, Johan, for joining us great today. Great pleasure. And uh, yeah, we'll speak soon again. Look thank forward you. to it. Thanks. Thank you.